Hey guys, how are y'all doing out there? I wanted to do a little episode. Let me turn this thing down a little bit uh, and kind of show you a little bit about this guitar before it goes out the door tomorrow and kind of catch you up on what's coming up on the channel. There's going to be a couple builds going on that are very uh, themey, let's put it that way. And I kind of want to share the setup with that on you so you can see what's coming. That way when you see the titles, if they interest you, uh, but a couple of them are going to be really cool. I'm going to put this on a rack here in a minute and go through what it is and tell you um, how I built it and some of the little nuances that I put on these things. And uh, this is for my friend Jack. I worked with him for a really long time. This license plate says Blues Lady. It meant something special to him. And um, anyway, we'll talk about this in a minute. Uh, you see my North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic shirt from uh, 2011. Well, you know what? This year it got canceled. We thought it was going to be virtual and everything, but you know what? I think next year it's going to come back strong and everything is going to be cool. But I wanted to share with you some of the best live Hill Country blues music that I've ever heard uh, that's been electrified has come out of that place, especially out of Luther and Cody Dickinson. And I hear... Cody Harrell is traveling with them a little bit here and there. Um, you might hear his name pop up in the future here, hint, hint. But um, Live in the Hills, North Mississippi All-Stars, Live in the Hills, Volume 1 and Volume 2. You can't beat this stuff. So I'm going to see if I can't give you a link below on how to track it down. Number one's really hard to find. This one still might be available. I'm going to try to give you the links down below. Now, I want to give a couple shout-outs here. You see this amp here? Remember, I can't play, and you all know that, but I was running a Fender Frontman 25-watt uh, thing in the house there, and I got a call um, from, believe it or not, one of my college professors saying he had an amp around, um, and he was going to just give it to me. Might need a little work or whatever, but um, hey, Corey, I want to give you a shout-out. Uh, number one, uh, great professor, dude. Your students really do well. And uh, number two, he's an attorney. Um, I think he's the first one I ever knew that had human characteristics, so that's a plus. Anyway, if you're in Southern California, Carter Law is the place to go if you've got issues with, uh, anyway, the stuff lawyers would want you to take a look at. You might want to do something like incorporate your business or something legit like that rather than you know the messy stuff so i'm going to give you a link to carter law uh, down below and uh god forbid you need an attorney at least you'll have one that's got human blood in his veins thank you Corey. now i took this amp into uh amp revamp shop down on melrose i hope i got that right anyway andy there went through this and it's about 20 years old and found some really simple things and brought it back to life. Um, I think this guy does a lot of amp work for a lot of people in Southern California. So if you're down on Melrose by Sunset and Santa uh, Monica Boulevard down there where the Troubadour and all them places are right down in there, chances are he's working on some pretty good amps for some pretty big name people but i know he took good care of me on this one it come out he replaced some things in there that he found didn't charge me any more but a andy at amp revamp shop on melrose uh there in southern california i'm gonna give you a link to him below if you've got amp issues or you're looking for one or something like that you want to talk to andy he took good care of me so let's run through this one on the bench and I'll show you what I did with it. Maybe I should turn this up. By the way, this thing is stupid loud. And it gets good feedback. There we go. That's just what I needed. All right, let's check this thing out. Let's run it up and down at first there we go there's the front now I'll stand by the camera and kind of show you 
what's happening here. Bear with me. Okay, so the first thing that happened is we had a personalized plate that was on somebody's car. It says Blues Lady there. You can see that. And I incorporated that into one of a Michael Breedlove at MGB uh, guitars. Um, one of his license plate kits and the nice thing about those is you've got cutouts inside the box already for your uh, volume controls and tone if you want to do all that kind of stuff and um, there's tabs to mount uh, the license plate on um, right away um, I did some uh, paint work on this and aged the box and I think there's an episode called new box old or old box new I forget anyway there will be a link to it right up there and it kind of gives you the aging technique here and you can see it looks like an old tore up box a um, couple of other things I incorporate into here is Jack had a lot of concert tickets of blues concerts and what I did was I took these and there's Walter Trout and uh there's some good stuff here. Uh, he gave me a cab matchbook. I don't even want to know, Jack, really, dude. Uh, but these are, are concert tickets. So I did was, was, was I digitized them and sized them just like you would matchbooks and put them on there. So that's pretty cool. Look, we got the e Eli Green Hoodoo Voodoo third string skull. Now, um, Jack brought some parts in. Oh, there is a 50th anniversary Woodstock memorial pick there made out of silver or something so i embedded that up in there but jack brought in some gibson tuners you don't usually see um those on a guitar like this and then we have a bone nut he also bought one of these what looks like a dearman an old dearman um foil pickup i've put one of those on an arch top and it sounded pretty good so he brought that and we protect in the corners uh, with uh, uh, these box corners that kind of match uh, those tuners up there we put a floating bridge on it so it's I'm trying to work <laughs> a stand here that's got six foot legs on it that's not working out but we've got the floating bridge uh, I have an episode coming out really soon called floating bridge on a license plate I'll give you a link to it right up there right about now uh, shows you how to do this now this one I use the whole thing you can see that I don't usually do that I usually just use this part here but I put the whole thing on there and uh, that worked out really well of course I put marks right there so the center of the bridge if you have to adjust this and get the intonation right you can do that and then finally really cool how I grounded the strings as usual uh, tension pins and copper tape but Jack provided me with this you know what this is it's an old 1956 tab instead of putting stickers on they used to give you metal tabs with these little bendovers on them there and so I incorporated that in there that came from Jack with the license plate um, it's got a single volume control that goes to the foil pickup um, always there's the grease art Hey, what's in the background? Hey, if if you want to go somewhere, go to Lay's Cafe, and it's got a bus <laughs> Greyhound bus station right over there by East End Bar. You wouldn't believe some of the matchbooks I get, but what a place to eat, huh? Lay's Cafe. Okay, we flipped it around to the back now. This is a this is a map of somewhere out east where people talk funny. Um, it was important to. To jack we've this back comes off here pretty easy with these screws um, remember the episode pocket protector yeah I put pocket protectors on this again this is off that church down there on Bonnie Bray some Pentecostal church in deep dark Los Angeles up the hill from Echo Park check that one out I put dowels in it like I usually do to strengthen both the um, heel board and let me pull this up here and the neck board I do like those tuners are expensive but I like the tuners and they're complemented by this piece of nasty sash cord I think I ran over my driveway a few times of course we got the buffalo nickel and then as always 
This piece of wood came from where Fred McDowell was recorded by Alan Lomax and George Mitchell. This piece of wood came from the can dump behind Reuben Lacey's church. And this came from the Topanga house where Alan Wilson lived and ultimately died. Uh, so there's a lot of whatever on this guitar. And uh, I hope Jack's going to like it. Maybe he'll post a video for us. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. And, of course, the last thing I want to show you is Tammy signed it right there. And um, if you don't know about Tammy, she's the whole reason I build these things. I'm going to give you a link up there. Margaret Garrett was good enough to uh, uh, tell the story in a little video up there. I'm going to give you a link called Why I Do This. But, anyway, I'm going to put this on the stand. Now, when one of these goes out the door... I'm not going to go through withdrawals or something because I'm sure Jack is going to blow this up all over the place. But I want to show you a couple things that I'm going to be working on pretty soon. Uh, and we'll go to the bench to do that. Let's go. All right, guys. The first thing we're going to do is get some stuff out of the way. I've been cutting bottlenecks, as you can see, with this thing. Remember this uh, cutting bottlenecks or something? I'll give you a link up there. You'll want to see that one. But anyway, I've been doing this now. I don't drink and I don't do anything fun except look in one of these oh, look at that I can't you see that that's cool I can't hardly see luckily I got this rag right here there we go play a little grandma spit game remember how she used to do your hair but I don't do anything fun I don't have to I got yeah that's good anyway back to reality these things don't blow out your liver go to your recycling center and ask them hey i want blue bottles i want green bottles and i think to help you out so anyway let me get these out of the way i got a lot of slides going on i got some stuff going on for the antelope valley fair all righty then i'm gonna put my spit rag back in the wink can right there wink wink and put my mirror where i've got it where i can make sure I look good all the time there we go now I've got these going on all the time these are festival guitars unfortunately the hill country picnic North Mississippi hill country picnic was canceled this year so I'm gonna put this one away for a year um, everything was ready to go and all I got to do is throw it in a box I've decided to uh, grab up this box and um, and put this church bus plate on it. This is going to R.L. Boyce's picnic, and that's going to happen this fall. So it's going to go in for a raffle. And um, a couple things I got to do here quick is I'm going to use some of my Topanga Canyon cherry stain. I showed you how to do an episode with a very controversial title. I'll give that up there on how do you make this stain. I think you'll get a kick out of that. It came out on Father's Day. And then, of course, I've got my uh matchbooks digitized and ready to go for this and um ooh, look at this first page house and son you know what that's all about got a royal crown cola matchbook remember furry lewis used one of these in the background yeah and then i've managed to get quite a few mississippi matchbooks here and again i just digitized these um, and I've shown you how to do that. I'll burn up an episode card. Matchbooking. And there's an interview um, with Bob Log III using, yeah, this mirror. Could you see me in there? Can you see me? I have to get on the camera. Oh, yeah, there. Check that out. Look at that high dollar me. Because that camera's cheap, that's for sure. Anyway, back to reality. Um... Anyway, matchbooking, there's a link up there to show you how to do that. Anyway, we're going to get some matchbooks on this one and get the guts in it and get it ready to send out. I got quite a few guitars going to the North Mississippi Hill Country area. So let's get this out of the way. All right, next. Um, hey, remember that episode I did called Neck Assembly Line? Which card am I into? About number four. Showed you how to blow out a few of these right away. And then I got this one notched. Um, for templates you know what I'm gonna burn up all my cards so we're gonna do neck assembly line um, link up there I made this one a junk wood all scrapped together you see the little pieces and stuff I think that turned out pretty good um, still got a lot of sanding to do here but 
Um, remember the template episode I did? I've given enough time talking slowly and going like this to give room for another card to pop up there about templates. Anyway, I've got a few of these necks laying around. And then have you ever heard that song where they're talking about I was born in the backseat of a Greyhound bus rolling down Highway 41. You know that song, Allman Brothers. I got a couple connections there. I know somebody that's kind of born into that family. I don't want to get any details. And I know some people on uh, another band member, one of the sons. I run in, into him in L.A., um, one of his kids. But So check this out. I got a Mississippi bus license plate and that kind of fits this theme and i'm going to put it on one of these of course do not covet my stuff because i have several mississippi bus license plates i like blue Ooh, look at that nice one too N matching numbers now you notice i get these things uh ordered up before i tell you because then y'all bum rush ebay and then i'm paying 40 bucks for a plate i used to pay six for but anyway now the secret's out I'm going to make some uh, Greyhound bus themed guitars. I think I'm going to have Michael Breedlove cut me some Highway 41 emblems. You've seen the 66 and 61 and 49 that I put up in my headstocks. But I think I'm going to do that. And I've been collecting up Greyhound bus matchbooks um, for the fat past few weeks here. And uh, anyway, I got several here. Do not covet my Greyhound bus matchbooks. I got some old ones here. These are pretty cool. Anyway, so you're going to see some Greyhound bus themed. I'm going to paint them um, the right colors to make everything match. Um, I think that'll work good. And uh, I'm pretty excited about these. So that's another project to look out for. All right, I am really excited about this little project. I got this kit. Um, from Michael Breedlove at MGB Guitars. It's one of his um, body already made kits. And this one's called a Comet. So I thought about what am I going to do for a theme on this? And, and I just got to thinking about the Greyhound bus thing. You know what? I'm going to make this a Greyhound bus theme too, going along with the Highway 41 and born in the backseat of a bus. So, of course, I got a neck here. I haven't glued on the fingerboard or done anything to shape it or anything yet but this is going to go on here now one of the things i'm going to have to figure out here is i'm always going to make it a 25 and a half scale so this will be a time where i'm going to make templates for this because i got to measure how far everything is and where it's going to end up and this is going to be an odd one for me because the body is going to end up or the the tail is going to end up inside the body. It's not going to stick out. So I'm going to put a tail piece on it like uh, an old, uh, one of them cheap arch tops. We're going to get to that in a minute. But there's a lot of things for me to figure out, like how I'm going to end this in the box, um, how thick that is, what that angle has to be there to mount that and make everything stable. So this will be a pretty interesting project. And it'll give you a look at another MGB body and what to do with it. And I'll make some mistakes and then you can come along and learn from my mistakes and come out with a good project but again i got enough greyhound bus stuff and and paint and colors i think this is going to be pretty good i think i'm actually going to paint the neck on this one um, it'll give me the opportunity for the heel board and everything again to uh, use these two different colors and make something pretty spiffy so watch for this one the comet body out of mgb done up in a Greyhound bus. Thing. Yeah, this one's dusty. I've been talking about this for a while, but y'all know that the Camacho 60x6 is my go-to box when I'm doing the cigar box guitars. Um, wow, this one's been to Reuben Lacey's church. Imagine that. Make sure I know which one that one is. But anyway, I love these boxes, and you know I like templates and stuff, so I can always take one of these slap it right on there makes it sure it's turned the right way of course that scorpion goes away but this goes down volume controls are here that's the right side i just slap this on here after i grind everything down mark everything off boom 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 and half the work is done but i am really excited about this one um i like this color i've been teasing y'all with this one for a while but i got some good stuff in here and um i've already 
pledge this one out to an artist in North Mississippi. You don't know him. Maybe you do. If you don't, you should, but I'm not going to out him um, just yet. Uh, but I've been excited to build this one for a while now. Do you know what this is? Can anybody tell me what this is? If you got one of these mail in the mail, you either didn't like it, unless you didn't like the person, or you thought maybe you could get rich off of it. But, yeah, tell me what that is. I've got this 1943 season pass for New York Central System. It took me a little bit to find one of these. I've got this from... Symington Gold Corporation, which is a jobber that makes different parts for different companies, and um, Rochester, New York. What else do I got in here? I got some New York Central matchbooks. I got a postcard of the train station in Lula, Mississippi. Know anything anything that happened there? Look at that. I got a, a Lula Gin Company. This is a, a tag for cotton cotton bale. I think I'm going to make that on the tailpiece over here. A little piece of wood from Reuben Lacey's church. Maybe there's a connection there. And then check these out. These, these knobs and this coin have actually been in the gas light in New York City. So check that playlist and find out who played there. But anyway, I'm going to crank this one out. And I'm going to be really happy. I've been waiting for this one to uh, come together and uh, see if you can figure out what the theme of this one is. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. I got a 1943 and a 1964 date nail from a railroad. Uh, hey, Larry Krieger, thanks for getting these for me. But that adds to your clues on this mystery. All right, that's a lot of projects I'm looking at. That's about enough, right? Yeah. Uh, no got one more hey you remember this we all run across these you know we always have to get one it's a junk arch top they made them by the hundreds or thousands in uh, the 50s and 60s and this was something uh, your uncle would get you for Christmas and then it would end up in a case and um, so anyway I got this one out of Arkansas a few years ago um, put some pickups in it and did my thing and uh, made my own pit guard and stuff like that um, but anyway I built it up took it to Bob Log the third he played it a couple songs in one of his concerts out here in California and then I hung it back on the wall so anyway I got this one here recently I didn't learn the first time on this one and what I mean by learn is you can get one of these guitars and stick $500 into one, fixing everything that's wrong with it, to end up with a guitar that's worth about $200 that cost $16 in 1956 or so. So we're going to take this one, and I'm going to show you how I made something like this into this, and then um, we're going to learn along the way what to look out for, just in case you want to join me in... Uh, going down this rabbit hole. Anyway, that episode is going to be called Dummy's Guide to Cheap Arch Tops. So <laughs> Alrighty, there we go. That brings us to an end here. I hope something that you saw there in the coming episodes is going to pique your interest and I'll try to make sure that the titles um, when you get notified, give me a like below and, and so you get notified. Um, was there anything for deck screw hater or metric hater? I don't think there was. Don't worry, I'll get you next time. But still, don't like it. You got to give me a dislike. It creates uh, uh, some kind of tension on, what is that, bakery gossip or something like that. Y'all need to get me on there because I really want to read about how messed up I am. So help me out there. Don't forget, give me a like and uh, watch for Jack to post a video with this thing. And I'll see you real soon. Yeah.